Um, uh, I'm Avi Friedman. I'm the founder and uh, CEO, one of the founders. And I am a networking person by background. I started in ISP in 92, uh, ran AboveNet, was at uh, Akamai. And uh, so I'm a recovering uh, network person and uh, struggling because I still like Perl over Python because I don't think white space should be syntax. The libraries, are, the libraries are all for Python. So uh, what do we do? It's network analytics to help those that are operating the infrastructure. Um, so it's data and then analytics on top and then the things you can do on top of it. About half of our customers are enterprise and about half of them are service providers. And the majority um, of our enterprise, you can think 70 to 80 percent, are, are the people that have been software companies, the people that grew up, anyone remember the term sneaker net? Before sneaker net. Um, so where you know they could count on the on uh, digital delivery, uh, the internet, and things like that, um, and uh, we're a SaaS platform, but we also do on-prem for those that need to hug their data and cannot let their IP addresses and all that out of their infrastructure. We respect that and let people do that. So, mega trends. Everyone reads about these, and they're all awesome, right? Cloud makes everything uh, easy, fast, cheap, trouble-free. Um, automation, if you go to, I don't want to pick on any particular vendors, but you know, their trade shows, it's all closed loop automation uh, is the promise. And then you go to the shows and it's write a Python program to do this one subtask that you actually do using these libraries. DevOps is awesome because we're all irrelevant, right? I mean, the developers just push code and then the vendors say, well, forget all that SNMP, it's all streaming telemetry now, figure it out, build your tools. Um, and sometimes ignore some of the other equipment that you run that isn't with that. And of course, AI is going to come and take our jobs, and we'll all be relaxing, and we'll be in the wall E world on the hover, the hover, uh, the hover chairs. Um, so our take on that, what we actually see is um, multi-cloud, um, especially getting into it when you're actually running an infrastructure and making it work, including the monitoring and operations, not just the architecture, but the operations, is not cheap or easy. It can be a great thing to do. It's very fast to do. You can invest a lot to make it operable. Um, automation does not mean simplicity. So I was sitting next to Russ White and he said this, and I forget whether it was <coughs> him or he was quoting someone, but somewhere someone's going to come to the people that can reason from first principles. And that's the analogy I use for network people. We have to be like physicists, right? You don't always need to know how the IGPs go, but when things don't work and you're convolving with bugs, then you do. Now you put automation on top of it. Um, it's, a, it's a fun, exciting world. And DevOps, we're seeing, can't really ignore NetOps, especially you know, when you're going to multiple environments. You've got the internet involved. You've got cloud services you're using, like Office 365 or Zscaler. And of course, uh, AI is not about to replace anyone's job, but there are ways in which techniques can help, uh, even um, some fairly, you know, decades old techniques around algorithmic AI and some of the more advanced stuff that people are doing now. Um, so our headline, uh, why we started Kentic is as the architectures evolve, operations need to evolve. And when I started the company, when I started looking in 2013, it was appliances, um, people trying to do their own stuff on top of Hadoop, and that was what led to uh, starting Kentic. So this is the world we live in, um, lots of architectures, um, lots of complexity, your, your traffic, their traffic, you've got different kinds of infrastructure. Automation, which is good, and then automation um, that can be confusing when you see the effects of it, and uh, attacks, and uh, the SH, IoT, um, and all those things going on. So our, our, our take on it is, what's needed is, like the DevOps Utes um, uh, have observability as a term, um, Network observability actually means being able to understand everything about the network. It's from the electrical engineering side of it. Um, but to be able to see everything, and I'll talk a little bit about the telemetry we take. And then our, our view is also you need to enrich it to make it make sense. So you're not scrying at, has anyone memorized all their IPv6 addresses in their network, the in-adder in zone? Um, you're not scrying at IP addresses. You know what user application context. Um, and then you need to be, to be able to have the systems help you. And our view is we're just at the beginning across, really, technology and platforms. So you'll see what Kentic is doing is trying to surface things you might want to look at, but then leaving the power um, of the humans. And then there are some things where more automated closed loop, like DDoS, some things people want to be in the middle of. And again, we'll show you some of that. Um, so what's our platform? 
our focus is on telemetry, and I'll dig into this in the next slide, but it's traffic data. So you could think of that as NetFlow, SFlow, IP fix, but also bunches of other kinds of traffic data. Device metadata, which is uh, SNMP streaming telemetry and all. And then the, the metadata to enrich. And then our goal is to bring that in, and so we normalize it, add context to it, do learning on top, and then we want to um, give people insights, so tell you things, and then immediately let you dig in. Or if you really are the super nerd that knows, I have all my questions in hand, I just want to do it myself, Kentic will still let you do that. That was where Kentic came from. Um, and then workflows, which we think of it as automation. I don't, I don't really like RPA, robotic process automation, but audit my bills, move my traffic, um, uh, establish interconnections. These are things that humans spend a lot of time on that we think we can help a lot with, and we have hundreds of customers so we can get into that. So our view is traffic is all networks. Right now, you talk to some of the big logging vendors, and I asked them, well, what do you do with flow logs? Do you sample? And they said, no, 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 you would never sample because v cloud flow logs, it's important to have security. And I say, awesome, what do you do for NetFlow? And they say, well, that's, of course, sampled because that's not network. You know, that's, that's like other networking. That's not security cloud networking. And, but if you can't see everything, uh, that becomes a problem. And so it's SD-WAN, it's your cloud. Now, we don't have traffic from SaaS providers. Um, but, so there's a limit to what you can get, but uh, cloud host, and we'll show you some of this um, uh, as we do the demos. And then devices, how many people use SNMP? Streaming telemetry? So I'll talk about that a little bit. Um, how many people have CLI scraping that they do to get like optics temperatures and stuff? We do some of that. Um, and then router APIs, which people have been doing for decades. So uh, this is an interesting place to be. This is sort of the net DevOps where people say, oh, it's all streaming telemetry and it's awesome. And then I was just at Nanog this week and I talked with three or four people that said, if you can't make your employer only use one vendor that only supports streaming telemetry, then you should just quit. And I said, well, you are entitled and that's not the real world. Um, and people are not gonna just, you know, there's enterprise, there's wireless, it's not gonna happen. And then the metadata, and we'll show you a little bit about this. For us to track what's Netflix or what's Facebook on Akamai versus something else, taking DNS plus traffic. Um, if you're a service provider, what customers, what customer ID by prefix, by BGP community, those things allow us to say, well, how much is this customer costing me? Are they being attacked? Um, application and Kubernetes context, if you have orchestration systems and IPAMs, bringing all that in. And then at the other end, we have integrations, which is, so our system sits over here. You can pull all the data out via API because all monitoring systems nowadays that, that, are, that are modern are gonna do that, but then also to drive actions. So we see ServiceNow is probably the number one network automation system in terms of human workflow that we see across our customer base. And then there's Slack and Teams and chat ops and you know, just Syslog and, and things like that. So these are all the, the inputs that are the main food of Kentic. And um, for any kinds of analytics, and especially when you wanna to start to do learning, having Good data, having rich data is really important. So very high level, who do we work with? It's people that are running the core infrastructure, so uh, troubleshooting proactively, interactively. We do a lot, um, I'd say most of our customers by far do some amount of interconnection. They do, they have an autonomous system number, they do some amount of peering. Um, our customers today are service providers and, and web content companies, a lot of them that make the actual edge and zero of them are living in this world of, I am gonna put servers and applications by every 5G uh, you know, tower. Um, it's very aspirational, but they still are running dozens of sites in some cases where they need to direct traffic, do debugging, use BGP, NACAST, things like that. Um, and then about two thirds of our customers do something with DDoS um, detection and then whether it's notification or cloud scrubbing or they have boxes, um, and that's because you know it's really an availability problem. Even though we're not selling primarily to SOX, if you're being flooded with packets and you can't respond and your business is down, that's a problem. And then we have some things that we'll show you some of that work really for service providers. Service providers are interested in really cutting costs aggressively and also finding uh, new revenue streams. So that was a little bit about Kentic and happy to take questions interactively. I'll tell you a little bit for some folks that will watch these videos or a couple of delegates that have seen a little bit about Kentic, about what's new since late 2018 when we presented. Um, first, we have an entirely new UI experience, which is oriented around these insights and workflows. 
if you looked at Kentic in the past, it was very data driven. Um, and you can still see that and it's still in Kentic. We have all the detail and you can g jump off and customize at any point to see anything. Um, on the service provider side, as I mentioned with DNS, we can start seeing CDNs, um, Disney Plus, OTT providers. Um, we have the ability for people to take parts of Kentic and give it to an internal enterprise customer or a service provider customer. Um, when we last talked, we didn't have Azure, now we have Azure. We have a host eBPF client so that we can actually see down to process ID level traffic information, but correlated all the way over with BGP, which we'll show you a little bit. Um, some new automation integrations and then for those um, um, just continuing to make progress on a number of backend things. So RPKI validation for routing security has been very big in our customer base. Um, VERFs and just looking at new kinds of data center and WAN topologies and, uh, and things like that.